is this one sucks. I give it a 4 out of 10. And I would say hopefully Bungie resolves it in the next expansion, but I'm not gonna fucking look at it unless the trailer shows space combat or some animated. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Shut up, okay? Fuck off. No Forsaken does not have space combat, nor anime titties, unfortunately. However, admittedly, I am a Destiny fan, and have been ever since the first game. So, seeing Cade die made me just want to kill, kill Aldrin. Almost everyone who played Destiny 1 would agree that the peak of the game was when their third DLC, The Taken King, was released. The Taken King was fucking massive. The campaign was about 10 to 15 missions. The side quests after the campaign had enough content to satisfy players until the raid released a week later. The King's Fall raid, in my opinion, was the best raid in Destiny history. With Forskin, sorry, with Forsaken, I expected the same amount of content and quality in this expansion, if not more, considering the very clear mistakes they had made with the first two Destiny 2 DLCs. No, scratch that. With all of just all of Destiny 2 was a mistake, not just the DLCs. So did this DLC live up to the hype? No, it did not. Is this DLC bad, however? No. It fucking phone went off. Fuck you. I'm very disappointed with how passable this DLC is, when it could have and should have been better. I would recommend this DLC for people who like Destiny, but if you're looking to get into the game, I mean, again, like you can just get p swimsuits in Persona 5. Don't get the impression that I hate this DLC due to my past record of hating the last two Destiny DLCs. This DLC is good, however my disappointment is that it's not great, like the Taken King was. I'm going to be spoiling Forsaken now, as if the advertising didn't spoil it enough already. So without further ado, I'm going to be reviewing my foreskin. Oh, wait, no, no, shit. The campaign is disappointingly average. It doesn't help that the only twist this campaign has were revealed in every single fucking advertising material and trailer released. You couldn't even buy the fucking DLC without having that shit spoiled to you, so don't give me that, oh, it was your fault for looking, fuck off. I think it's okay to advertise some twists in the trailers in order to draw people into buying, however, don't fucking reveal everything. They should have only revealed, like, a part of the big twist. For example, only showing K dying and not Aldrin coming back, or vice versa. The campaign starts with a simple mission, with enough humour and spectacle for the mission to be entertaining. They introduce this new enemy type called the Scorn. If Bungie didn't make them related to the Fallen, they could have been passed off as different enemies due to their different design and the way they play. Bungie kind of played themselves with that one considering all the fucking criticism they got with the Taken and the Siva Fallen. From this mission on, the level design and narrative plummet significantly. The setup for getting revenge on Aldrin is thrown out the fucking window when they want to focus on these fucking barons, which they so desperately try to push as these band of villains with different personalities, but end up being just generic big scorn with cliche dialogue. Up to the final boss is all filler. You have simple A to B objective levels similar to the first mission, however, the difference is that the first mission had enough humorous dialogue and epic explosions to keep the level from being tedious and boring. These missions don't have the same epicness or scenery to make it as entertaining, and you know, Cade's fucking dead so there's no humour. After you do some tedious bounties for the spider, le like legit, seriously, fuck this part, it's so fucking boring, you are told to kill all the barons. This part is split up into six different adventures. All six adventures follow the same formula. Look around, scan something, kill enemies, Find the boss, boss runs away, follow the boss, kill the boss. All six missions are like this with slight variations. I wanted to off myself while playing this. I still want to off myself. They cuck you from having the adventures be cool as well. I remember this one from the Rider mission where they say that Cade had to race the Rider to beat her and get her into the Prison of Elders. Why can't we fucking race her? That sounds fucking cool! It's like, nah. Instead we get... Oh, follow her in a pike. She's gonna run away all the time. <sighs> Thank you, Bungie. Very cool. You do another mission. This is it's boring. But the last mission takes you to the Dreaming City, where you kill the last Baron and face Aldrin. Hell yeah, I've been fucking waiting for this. 
I bought this DLC to kill this motherfucker. I'm gonna shove my Whisper of the Worm right up his fucking ass. What the fuck? When is this even established as being a thing? This boss felt like I was being cocked. He fucking gets a shot of the Traveler. You would think he'd that he'd get the light and he'd have a super, we have a super and we verse him with our supers because we're both guardians and we fight like kind of like the Crucible and beat, beat this epic boss fight. But no, we get this giant testicle with hentai tentacles. It's so anticlimactic, did fucking Ryan Johnson make this? It really subverted my expectations, so like, he probably did. And that's all the campaign. Yeah. It has the same amount of missions as Warmind. I'm pretty sure Curse of Osiris had more missions. Like, to be fair, the ones here are, like, a better. Some of the missions I skipped because they're so fucking forgettable. Just, like, they're boring. There's all the criticism you get. If I left out your favorite mission, yeah, because one of these missions were definitely your favorite. Fucking hell, were you beaten as a child? So, excluding the filler copy and paste adventures, that totals to five missions. That fucking sucks. That's so pathetic. Compared to The Taken King, not only... Is it shorter, but it's worse in terms of mission design and narrative. I guess there was a tank mission. Wow. Tank mission. Have you played any other game before? You're impressed by that. Simple things that needed to be explained were not explained. Like how Aldrin is still alive after the butt fucking he got in the Taken King. Or in fact, more character development for him. I don't exactly know that much about him. You know, people who started with Destiny 2 are even more fucked than I am because they didn't even know who the fuck who Aldrin is. Or what the Prison of Elders is. Come on, just like a fucking three minute cutscene could have fixed this. So the campaign is utter dog shite. However, once you struggle through that, you are treated to some actual fucking good content. The quests and patrollable areas you unlock after the campaign are the most fun and engaging content of the DLC. The Ace of Spades quest is a great quest line with an even greater reward. The mission featured at the end of this quest is really fucking good, yet having barely any shooting and it's only chest scavenging. The idea of having a quest to unlock a patrol zone was one of the best ideas that Bungie has ever had. It's a lot better than having them just fucking give it to you as you scratch your ass and wait for the game to tell you what to do. My favorite aspect of this expansion is the emphasis on discovery and secrets. Admittedly, I just look half of this shit up on YouTube, but I prefer this to them just telling you what to do, because it usually results in me just fucking rushing everything and then complaining that I have nothing to do. Just like the last two DLCs. Except the difference is there was actually nothing to do in those DLCs. Gear isn't simply handed to you anymore, and the pace for leveling your power is a lot better. Some things might need to be adjusted, like the exotic drop rate and the material drop rate. Especially the material drop rate. Why the fuck did they make infusion so fucking tedious? 25 materials and a masterwork core just to infuse the weapons I like instead of using double shotgun and a grenade launcher. Are you fucking my ass? I really don't like what they did to infusion. I like the idea of making infusion not as thoughtless as it was before. However, at the same time, I don't want to keep running around planets tediously opening chests. I would have preferred either materials from chests drop more, around like 5 or 10 per chest, or they have items specifically for infusion that drops from bounties or something, you know, like, something like an infusion call or something like that. I'm still confused as to why they have high level activities such as blind well in a patrol zone with the limit of 3 per fire team or no matchmaking. Your reliance on doing it just depends if you're lucky and willing to tediously go back and forth until you happen to load in with other people. Bounties are back, which is good. Most of them are pretty generic, but they're, some are pretty cool, especially the ones on the Dreaming City. Overall, there's a lot of content here, with the post-content and hidden quests being hidden, some of which I don't even fucking know exists. I don't fucking know. I'm sure in a week or two after writing this, it's gonna be real that it's really simple and I'm a fucking idiot. Weekly Reset came out. I'm, I'm, I'm a fucking idiot. It's, it's, it's pretty fucking easy. Wow. Just. Wow. That Prison of Elders strike? Ooh. Ooh. Best in Destiny history. It even combats the best strike quote of with a Dismantle Minds, yes. Every different encounter in the strike is unique to the point where every room there's something different, which is basically what strike should be, and that is why this strike is so fucking good. Oh, th I, they, they made other strikes too, I, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Gambit's fun. I've never liked The Crucible, especially compared to other multiplayer games. However, this game mode is exactly what I asked for and wanted. In my Warmind review, I said, 
hey, get crazy with this shit. Don't make it fucking generic. Oh, run around, shoot. Oh, control zone. Oh, we've never seen that before. But it's very unique. I don't think I can think of a multiplayer game who has a game mode similar to this. If this game mode was more rewarding, I don't think I'd be playing anything else. Like, I'd only be on Gambit, because it's so fucking fun. My only gripe with it is that fuck Sleeper Simu. The new supers are alright, I guess. Some are really fucking awesome. Basically, the new supers that I consider to be creative and epic are the Sledge Hammer, the Dio Knives, the Kame- the Hum- the, how do you say it? I'm gonna pronounce it wrong and everyone's gonna get mad at me, I'm just gonna say it, okay? The Kamehameha and the Zorwadu. The rest are pretty lame. You got Arc Blade 2. You got Jedi Arc Staff, which is pretty cool. However, Hunters have fucking way better supers than this, so it's basically useless. The Big Shield, which I thought Titans already had. Fist of Havoc, too lazy for those just to Titan skate, so it just launches you by itself. And then we have this Well, which is basically the ability that you already had, but as a super. Overall, some of the supers are a bit shit and underwhelming. The rest of them, yeah. They're pretty good. Oh my god, the raid is so fucking awesome. It's so good. I have an erect. I haven't played the raid yet. I was not ready for the 550 requirement. My 520 ass was too busy playing Spider Man and making this video. I mean, it looks good. Thank fuck it's on the fucking Leviathan again. It seems they went back to their old roots of a longer raid which prioritizes bosses and actually drops the fucking loot. Tokens for a raid is the dumbest shit idea since the entire Warmind expansion. I'm looking forward to playing this, all I need to do is just do the very slow fucking grind. It's fucking slow. The time it takes to acquire powerful loot takes way too long. It doesn't help that infusion costs one of your lungs. This week I've done basically all the powerful engrams and bounties along with playing a shit ton of gambit and I've only progressed about 9 to 12 levels. This might just be because I suck dick or that I'm spending way too much time on Spider-Man. However, as a casual player, this feels very tedious and boring. In the two and a half weeks that this expansion has been out, not one exotic has dropped. No, I'm not talking about new Forsaken exotics, I'm talking about exotics in general. Not one has dropped. I guess the Chaperone quest dropped, if you can count that. But that's it. Two and a half weeks worth of grinding and I have barely anything to show for it. I wouldn't mind this grinding for powerful gear if the activities I'm doing are captivating, however it's the same shit. There's Dreaming City bounties which are fun and interesting but that's like once a week. What am I supposed to do for the rest of the week? Public events? T yeah, fuck off. This isn't to say that it ruins the whole experience, in fact it only ruins the raid because I can't fucking do it. Even though this isn't saying much, this is the best piece of Destiny 2 content that has been added. I do prefer the Taken King, however this is not too far behind. To be fair, a lot of these problems I've listed are personal preferences of mine. I guess what we'll need to see is how it'll fare in a month or two. However, as of now, I'm going to give this expansion a 7 out of 10. I would recommend this probably only to people who enjoyed Destiny or Destiny 2, because people who want to get this expansion, who haven't been keeping up with Destiny 2, have to waste their money on Curse of Osiris and Warmind for some reason. Like, Bungie, why the fuck do they have to buy the two expansions if, like, at the start of Forsaken, you have an option to skip those two? It's fucking pointless. This expansion would have gotten a higher score if... Infusion wasn't such a pain in the fucking asshole. <laughs>